Pope Francis wants Eastern Rite Catholic priests in India to face East during the lit liturgy of the Eucharist. But modernist clerics down there are telling the Pope they will only face the people. Go figure. Join us with the latest from the Eternal City Church Milton Rome correspondent, Dr. Jules Gomez. Jules, a strange liturgical war has uh, been going on between modernist Cyril Malabar priests uh, on one side in India and, uh, are who, and who are demanding to face the people through the whole liturgy, the whole mass. And they're in open rebellion with Pope Francis and the Cyril Malabar bishops and a traditional Cyril Malabar priests down there who want to face the people only for the liturgy of the word, but the rest of the mass face the altar or liturgical east. Uh, do I have that story right? Can you catch us up on that and what the Pope has just done on this story? Uh, Brad, uh, Pope Francis has sent Cardinal Matteo Zuppi to sort out the war in Ukraine, but there has been a liturgical war fiercely being fought in India for the last 60 years and four popes have not been able to sort out this war. Now, the most recent adventure, uh, which may not be the last, is that Pope Francis has sent uh, Archbishop Cyril Vazil, who is a Slovakian Jesuit. He was the former rector of the Pontifical uh, Oriental Institute and is now head of the Greek Catholic, the Eastern Greek Catholic Church in Kosciuszki in uh, Slovakia. And he has been sent as Pope Francis's delegate to try and sort out this mess that seems totally intractable. So he's being sent down to India. Do you have an actual town location where he's going to be landing down there or where the focus of this is? Absolutely. The epicenter of the whole conflict is the, the Archdiocese of Ernakulam Angamali, which is in the southernmost state of Kerala, and that is the state where St. Thomas the Apostle went in AD 52 and baptized his whole, you know, his first converts. This is where the uh, Cyril Malabar Church is based. Uh, it's spread all over the world, you know, the United States. The United Kingdom, Germany, and there are five million people, five million Catholics belonging to this church all over the world. Fourteen dioceses in uh, in this particular church, and uh, uh, the Archbishop Cyril is going with another Cyril Malabar priest from Rome to this uh, town, to this archdiocese of Ernakulam. Okay, so for the viewers who have not been catch, watching this story unfold for, well, I don't know, a couple years at least now, we've been covering it at least, uh, can we talk about the open rebellion? Dial us in on that open rebellion between modernist Catholic priests and the Cyril Malabar Rite, uh, b between them and Rome. Can you help us get up to speed on this story? Sure. Uh, we need a little history. Now, the Cyril Malabar church follows the ancient East Syriac rite, which is far older than the traditional, you know, than the Tridentine rite. And uh, with Vatican II, uh, the uh, lit liturgy, I think it was uh, in, uh, it was somewhere in the uh, just after Vatican II, the uh, liturgy was translated into the local language Malayalam, and uh, priests began to Latinize, you know, the spirit of the Vatican II and all that sort of thing. And a number of priests began to face uh, the people while celebrating Mass, even though it was not uh, authorized in the rubrics. Uh, the, a number of other priests continued to follow the old style of the Mass. And so this created a division. So there are, four, there are 14 dioceses, four have traditionalist priests facing East, uh, 10 had modernist priests facing the people. And uh, in 1999, uh, the bishops arrived at a kind of compromise solution where they said uh, the priests need to face the people at uh, populum uh, during the first part of the Koli Kurbana, uh, the sacrifice of the mass. Uh, and that would be the liturgy of the world. 
word. But during the second part of the Holy Kurbana, the liturgy of the Eucharist, uh, priests would have to face ad orientem, uh, the altar, and that was rejected. And this has been a battle uh, that has been ongoing. Now, Pope Francis proposed this compromise formula. He agreed with them, and he endorsed this compromise formula last year in August, but uh, there was a, re in 2021, sorry, in August 2021, but uh, all 454 priests of this Archdiocese of Ernakulam and Gamali revolted and said, we are not going to listen to Pope Francis. Now, just to clarify, the ones who are in rebellion are the modernist priests down there who say, I will not face the altar at any part of the Mass, but the traditional Traditionalist priests who want to continue facing uh, liturgical East, at least throughout the liturgy of the uh, Eucharist, they're, uh, they're in union with Pope Francis. So you have Pope Francis and the traditionalist priests down in India saying, yes, let's face East during the liturgy of the Eucharist. Uh, and it's the modernist element down there that says no, and they're actually in full-blown rebellion right now. Uh, let me tell you, Brad, a quote directly from a priest friend of mine who is a priest in the Sir Malabar Church, and he is a traditionalist, and he told me this. He said it, it's highly ironic that the liberals in our church are unwilling to accept a liberal compromise formula proposed by a liberal pope. Oh, Francis, <laughs> you know, he said, we find this as traditionalists in the Surah Malabar Church, we find this highly ironic. You know, if you're so liberal, what's the problem with accepting a compromise formula? Why are you so hell-bent on wrecking the church, on creating scandal after scandal, be simply because you want to adopt a modern posture of facing the people during the whole of the Mass? It's, it's really interesting that Pope Francis would be on the right side of, uh, you know, liturgy here, allowing them to face the liturgical East, and, it, it, and it's being rejected by the modernist element. When you said scandal upon scandal, Jules, it was something that very, very serious happened down there. The modernist element in the Cyril Malabar Rite down in India expressed this rebellion last December actually with sacrilege. Can you catch us up to speed on that? Uh, Brad, this is heartbreaking because remember, India is a predominantly Hindu country. And when something like this happens, it's all over the media and the repercussions for the church are huge. Uh, so what happened on Christmas Day was uh, the modernists uh, invaded uh, St. Mary's Cathedral Basilica in Ernakulam. They toppled the vessels from the altar. They, you know, just went on a rampage in the church, in the cathedral, uh, with the result uh, that the mass had to be stopped, uh, police had to be brought in, uh, there were brawls inside the cathedral. I think even, uh, you know, the, the wine was spilled, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but uh, as a result of that, uh, the Archbishop ordered the closure of the cathedral, and so far the cathedral has not been open for public worship. But what is ongoing is, the, you know, the demonstrations and people fighting uh, in the streets, uh, police being brought in to separate uh, the warring uh, factions, uh, and, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, the earliest and the oldest church in India engaging in such shameful behavior. And all of that sacrilege and everything was at the behest of the modernist priests who would refuse the Pope's uh, direct order to be, you know, to, to have this facing liturgical East during the Mass. It was the modernists who actually committed that, modernist priests who actually uh, committed that sacrilege? 
Absolutely. Uh, again, you know, not even a direct order. Uh, Pope Francis was very gracious. He pleaded with them and he offered it to them as a compromise formula. Uh, Pope Francis, I'm sure, was told, and we'll get into this, about the tragic history of Vatican uh, Serum Malabar relations. And he was very cautious, you know, treading on eggshells here. So it came more as a humble plea from uh, a, a, a generous father who has listened to both sides and who has agreed on a compromise. And yet it was the modernists, as you rightly said, who rejected this formula, who continue to reject, by the way, the, the priest in charge of the cathedral was suspended, but he continues to be at the forefront of this rebellion. Okay, Jules, let's break it right down to the brass tacks. What is the solution. The Archbishop just got, you know, cut loose yesterday by the Vatican, sent down there to solve this problem. What does he need to do to solve this deadlock? Uh, Brad, there is, uh, you know, there, there might seem to be no easy solution, and what Pope Francis has done is wise. Because Pope Francis knows that this church that was started by St. Thomas the Apostle, it is an apostolic church in AD 52 and existed for almost 15 to 1600 years with no relationship to Rome. And then when the Portuguese missionaries came, they saw the Serumalabar Christians, uh, the St. Thomas Christians, as they were known. They uh, First, they, they loved what they saw, but then they thought that uh, this rite is pagan. And so, ironically, again, uh, these people br brought their Tridentine liturgy and tried to stamp out the ancient Syrian liturgy. Uh, that, that there was there was uh, there was persecution. The, the Latin Catholics persecuted the Eastern Catholics. Now all this needs to be kept in mind because this is what keeps the resentment fueling, and uh, keeps fueling the resentment. And when I talk to people on the ground, they say, let's not forget what Rome did to us for the last 600 years. Now the solution would be very simple, actually, to simply adopt the status quo. And as my priest friends there tell me, they say, you know, okay, there are churches, there are dioceses, four dioceses that face east. Let them continue to follow the tradition because people are so tradition-minded in those dioceses. However, in the modernist churches facing the people, again, that has become a tradition because that has existed for at least 60 years now. The, the new generation and the last generation knows nothing else. And so let that remain as well. The answer, in Pope Francis's own words, would be permit diversity. Hmm. Well, an authorized liturgical innovation was rampant after Vatican II, even in the West. Uh, facing liturgical East during the liturgy of the Eucharist does make sense, and maybe the Holy Father could stiff-arm some of the Novus Ordo bishops, at least in America, uh, to allow traditional-minded priests here to face liturgical East during the liturgy of the Eucharist. Just saying. Jules, thank you so much for helping to untangle this story for us. Thank you, Brad. Thank you.